not sure how much time we have. We'll do a quick little Q&A if you have any questions and answers. Is Chrissy here? Krista. Yeah. There's another producer right here. Friends and family here tonight. So, it's, <laughs> and if you didn't see your name there in the credits. There, it's my bad. So yeah, when we um, when we premiered this in Beijing at, um, at their festival, one of the questions at the Q and A was, um, "So do you think mushrooms cures all your troubles?" <laughs> do they? Do they? Well, don't knock it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is really lovely. We're, um, can I take your picture? Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. If you don't mind, then I can just give a cover your face there. Right. Um, this is a real treat, except for sort of a uh, real. You give it. You talk. You do the talking. You're smarter. No, I don't. I don't say it. <laughs> I have the questions, and she has the answers. Um, I'll go into it. Okay. Are you ready? We got a couple of angles. Oh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so as we, uh, we shot it for um, $149,000. Wow. Did it uh, in uh, Thank you. Vancouver was very kind. It was very kind in town. And then uh, in 12 days, and Telephone was our uh, equity partner in, on all that. Um, I don't know, it's just it was a dream team, you know, to have a little team. Yeah, how long did it take you to write? How long did it take, well, to the right, uh, how long did it take to write? It was um, uh, kind of like, I would say, three lifetimes. Um, <laughs> I went through a lot of different experiences. When I started writing this, I thought I'd have a real sad, dark end. And then, you know, as life progresses, things change. And, 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 I mean, um, it took probably three years, maybe four, four years. But it came, it came together fairly quickly. It was like um, a script. I know there's a few screenwriters in the audience here. And they, uh, for me, this was one where I didn't know what was going on when I was writing. I had no idea where we were headed. It was just kind of just making up, you know, like a, it's called, it's called tunneling. We just, so it wasn't like it went through a lot of rewrites. I had no idea where it was going from scene to scene. And then, um, uh, and then we kind of shot it in the same sort of just kind of wild frenzy, just kind of just trust, see the pants, you know, production, seems the writing, it's kind of the spirit of it. Yeah. I mean, you get the initial idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's, you're an astrophysicist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Well, Well>, no. <laughs> hey, hey. No, wow. but I wanted, did you start from the physics part, or did you start from the, I mean, how did you put it together? I wanted to just put together everything. I wanted to do this smart, reach for the, you know, the, try to do the smartest thing I could possibly do, just to explain human behavior. So for a grand unified theory, I wanted to put in physics, I wanted to put in magic, and I wanted to put, even the music was inspired by a more spiritual realm. I uh, that, you know, picked up on that, trying to get religion and uh, drugs and sex and violence, but everything in there, all these pieces, it's kind of like a, like a sculpture, and hopefully them together would reveal something. That was kind of the inspiration. And I'll, and, but I've written up a little bit of science uh, fiction with some characters here. Where's Jeff? Jeff, there's the back there. Um, so you come across these really cool astrophysicists with these wicked ideas when you're writing, you need some science for your science fiction, but it always doesn't always end up in a movie when you're a gun for hire, at least in my limited experience. So this is not pretty cool, that's cool, trying to pull the cool stuff in there. And, try, and, and again, you know, when you're trying to make sense of life, we use psychology, we use religion, we use these different prisms, but we don't often talk about what we're made of, which is, I think, pretty crazy stuff. I don't know if you agree. No, I like very much, very much. Uh, because it's, people are so afraid of science and of math, it's difficult, yeah. we can't understand, it's not part of life. So you're yeah. putting it together. Exactly. You just, science uh, is sexy. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like a bad I think you're only scared of it because it's mostly a lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I take on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, as of recently, I think the Earth is flat. Yeah. Well, because the like the, the water will fill the cup perfectly and it will be perfectly flat. That's why we we'll call it sea level in the first place. Yeah. Well, Doesn't matter how high you go up in space, you can always see the flat. You never see the same with the plane. The the pilots will fly and fly endlessly yeah. and they never dip the nose down yeah, every few minutes when they go a curve. Yes. The curve, right? Yeah. So yeah. what is that? Well, it's what's like, on the side thing? It's like a lot of questions out there. It's like, it's like, <laughs> that's that's like I mean, what do you want to say? NASA just released, let's say, they're making something called Orion. That's mm -hmm. their new technology going uh, yeah. beyond the Van Annabelle yeah. and come back yeah. for the first time. Yeah. But the moon is beyond the Van Annabelle. Yeah. So, how did we go to the moon before that? Then? Your website. Sorry, brother. I, it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Either, that, it was confusing to me. Like, they say something and then they contradict themselves yep. right after. Right? My whole like, life to me is contradictions and paradoxes. I figure like, you add them all up, you get high enough. So, so yeah. You can feel to see it. Yeah. Buddy. Was any of those 
Oh, is the film improvised? Oh, was it improvised? You know, um, the youth dance, uh, you were there. Uh, not, not, no, not really. I mean, Dave, David was so good. He's so good with actors. He gives them so much freedom, and, and I think that's that that showed. In Chris him. was also an actor in the film. Not really. It's not my butt. Um, oh, and I, I was like, Woo! Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was totally improvised. We just ran with it. He was like, let's keep the scene. Okay. Uh, no, it was pretty scripted. Like, um, not like if there was any improvisation, it was very, very limited. But, um, but in saying that, David gave the actors all of them very, like, a lot, lot of freedom to, to, to talk and to discuss. And to, well, as you know, it's like uh, Jeff directs and writes and produces. And uh, as you know, when you have a little more creative control on the set and someone's going left and you think thinking, right, you can kind of go with it. You know, it was really exciting when on the day we just changed things. Like the rainy scene, when it was raining, remember at the beginning of the umbrella and the two were walking through? Yeah. Like that was supposed to be sunny. It was, it was actually the only day of rain that we had in all 12 days. Yeah, in and Vancouver. In Vancouver. Like, it's crazy, that was a long time ago. So the, uh, the, um, uh, when it was rain, uh, so we just had to go shoot it. I mean, we didn't have time. And uh, like most of the shots, if you notice, are single takes. Uh, we, to cover a scene, we have like one angle. And uh, so we had to shoot. So I think that kind of worked out because um, they all suddenly kind of together and the umbrella was kind of romantic. I feel like David was, he's kind of like a little kid when he's Sorry. directing. He's also, he's always so excited. And he's just like, okay, okay, that's, that's cool. We'll just go with that. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Okay. Next movie, Edwin. Police are here. Run away. <laughs> I remember someone asking me, so, like, Edwin made a lot of movies, but he wasn't really the best filmmaker. And it's like, you know, maybe, a dude, you know, um, should you just still keep movie, making movies? You know? <laughs> so I don't know if you guys like that, but uh, it was a, this was so much fun to make. Like, that's just it. It's a process. You know, you're working with, with good people. And, uh, the cast, we, we, like, we didn't have time to sh much time to shoot. We had time to uh, cast it a year and uh, just spent time, you know. Yeah, tell, tell them about, like, um, how many theater actors are actually in this. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Half the actors are found in the theater didn't have agents, so when I was casting, I was looking at films, and we had two casting agents helping us find the cast. We also, uh, I also went to plays, like, once a week, and, like, Scott Bell, that's the main guy here, he would never come to an audition. Uh, he doesn't even have an agent. He's got a family, and he's just, the 10% that went to the agent, he's just, he's full. He started a bar on the beach in Vancouver, which is a big deal. And, uh, and then he's the one who recommended Andrew McNee, the, the crazy guy with the blue and, and all that, Victor. Uh, I would never have found him with that Scott, because it's the same thing. He, is a, he spends most of his days in the theater. And, uh, and I just love working with them here. I thought they were perfect. Just a question. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's the plan for distribution? What's the plan for distribution? That's a great question. Well, <laughs> um, we're going to do, eventually we're going to do iTunes, and we're going to do Amazon Prime. We're a lot of, um, we're going to try to kind of shake it up a little bit, um, because in the past, I think a lot of independent, you know, films have just kind of gone, okay, go to a distributor and let them do everything and what ends up happening is you don't really have any control and you don't really see what happens or you don't really see any money or anything. So, um, yeah, we're going to do we're gonna do that and, and we're going to be able to kind of see the results and, and get the money back instead of it going to fees and all that. It's interesting, like Cineplex, so we don't have a distribution deal. So, right. I mean, we're coming off a wonderful festival run, so, but we went directly to Cineplex in lieu of the distribution. And just to see if they would have us, and they, they're taking a flyer on us right now with this screen, and they're giving us Calgary. And if we keep the momentum up, they'll just build on that. That's kind of the first wave of distribution. And our, our next wave is in the fall, when we're going to do something with the First Weekend Club. We're going to put this in theater and uh, planetariums uh, across Canada. And uh, we have a, a resident astrophysicist on our team, Dr. Jamie Matthews, who he, he really wrote most of that lecture. And uh, he's awesome, and he's, uh, he teaches at Order of Canada, he teaches at UBC, and he's going to introduce us to uh, Mr. Tyson in New York City, apparently, and then we're going to hit, try and hit the states with the same agenda, same uh, dream. So that's the plan right now. It's, there's something like that, that right now. But you, you guys being here right now is a huge part of it, and it's, yeah. it means so much. Like, it's, a, it's a really big deal to be in Toronto and to have you guys here. And just yeah, competing with the big girls and boys in the, in, uh, in the center of you know, the universe. And, um, <laughs> it's exciting. It's a big deal. It means a lot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to say something, I'm going to follow it up with a question. First, uh, I just want to say that when you were all back in film school... Yes, we were the film school together. Yes. This, this, uh, I know that we all daydreamed about one day, one of us, some of us, many of us, having our films on a big screen, and us all being here and being able to watch it. So yeah. I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. This is a good us. Um, but my question is, um, how important was it for you for this film to be shot in Vancouver, and do you think it could have been shot anywhere else? Well, 
could have been shown, they needed to be shown in Vancouver, could have been shown anywhere else. Well, I, it was kind of an opportunity because when the writing of it, like, there was, I didn't think it would get made, frankly. So it was just kind of a, I just put everything into it, I just want to go for it, just put everything in it that I wasn't really allowed to in other places. And so uh, I was just trying to be honest and uh, as much as I could. I figured that was kind of a good start for the whole project, just trying to be honest with everything. And so getting the opportunity to shoot in North Van where I grew up, in my mom's house, and from an occasion, I actually recreate some events from my life in that story. Including like what, David? <laughs> <laughs> I was, that, the whole masturbation thing, that's not. I was not that business, of course. But the, um, the jacket. But the jacket was real. And so was, you know, the poor young guy going and saying, I want to see my jacket and then trying, trying to drive her home. And, then, and, and, and I remember going to a buddy, I was working with him going, Master Up, but she said she had to think about it. He's like, you should not go out with her now. Like, okay. Anyway, so it's another thing kind of took me back home. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, the shooting in our van was a real opportunity to be truthful. And that was if, if any of you are on social media, it means so much to me if you share and comment and like and, and you know on Twitter we're at a second chance PRD and on Facebook it's Grand Unified Theory Film and our hashtag is Grand Unified Theory Film. Um, if you're social media savvy at all, we would love for you to go up there and say you know, positive, wonderful, happy thoughts. <laughs> it really helps us push it forward. Yeah, and in the traditional filmmaking in the Arson in, in, in this town, we're going yeah. to the library. Imperial Pub. The library. The library. Right. 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 Imperial Pub. Who's your favorite bass? Seriously. Skinny puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, How's it going out there? <laughs> Virtual world, real world. Congrats, guys. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. That was lovely to see you. You see what I saw? It. I saw the demo. I made a couple of other times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> But then, I might have to put next to my next to the person I should have talked to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I But I cannot go to him and say, no, I lost him. So that. Okay. These are my friends, Ron and Charles. Yeah. Run Oh, of course. Thanks for being here. Oh, oh it's terrific. Big hot yeah. 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 You make films too, is that right? I'm sure I'm writing more for TV, but... Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. TV? Oh, yeah. Sorry. And Should we get out here? Thank you. Thank you. How are you, Gia? Good to meet you. Thanks for seeing me. I've been fractured by Andy. I'm Master Chef Dude, so you're working. Judy, 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 this is for Connie and Doug. So this is for Connie and Doug. Okay. Back three. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't get talked. Oh, okay, good. One more. Terrific. Okay, I will. One, two, three, four. There are four people. I think I took. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, a few things you got to keep going. Right? Oh,
you're going all the way back. You live right in the center of the city. I do that. We live at Davis Mills. Oh, Ajax. 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 Oh,
F8. And, oh yeah, that's probably where we're looking. 2017, we're in April, this is Saturday, April 29th, 2017 for the Deep Archives. And look what's coming up next week. Yeah, it does. Yes. Yar. We just walking around Toronto right now. Uh -huh. In the Dunda Square. Uh -huh. You see the pecs. There's a lovely lady. She is the gamekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 